least 12 ministers would oppose any move to leave the ECHR, as put forward by the Prime Minister. Uh, there are six ministers who support leaving. Are you a leaver or a remainer, Victoria <laughs> Atkins? Well, I, I'm afraid I've got form on this, Nick, because I wrote a paper back in, uh, I don't know, 2014, calling for a, a British Bill of Rights because I do not believe that human rights uh, were invented with Labour's Human Rights Act. Um, uh, and so uh, whilst, of course, the fundamental principles of the Convention are principles that with which we would all not only agree but okay. uh, very much uh, want to have as part of our legal framework. Um, I do, you know, I do understand the concerns that have arisen because of Labour's Human Rights Act. I, I was a criminal barrister at the time. I remember the um, upheaval that that uh, Human Rights Act brought into the criminal justice system, let alone the rest of the legal world. Uh, and I was very concerned about the impact that that would have on victims of crime. All I will say to you, if uh, a man who's prepared to go live on the Nick Ferrari show in the form of Rishi Sunak and lied to you twice. Right. Do you think you can trust that man? And I'll just I'll just uh, explain the lies. Please. The first lie is yes. Yeah. The first lie. Yesterday he he justified selling arms to Israel because none of our, our other allies had stopped sending arms to Israel. Well, as I see it, the current list is Canada, the Netherlands, Japan, Spain, Belgium, Italy, and Denmark are presently in the courts in their own courts to stop sending arms to Israel. So he lied on that point to right. try and force it to you know, I, I knew, I knew to... about Netherlands. I didn't know about that. Look, where are you getting that list from, just out of interest? Uh, sorry, that's just, you can source out, or your producer can okay. source that if he, okay. if he looks up right. who currently spend it. The second lie he told you, and we'll go back to the ECHR, yeah. the ECHR, it's a foreign court. No, it's not. It's an international court based in Strasbourg, which is in France. If it wished, it could relo relocate itself in London, in Cardiff, in Birmingham, uh, in Wellingborough. Oh, maybe not because there's somebody there who does rude things. But anyway, but the important thing about the ECHR, the reason he can't do it, some very famous blog, uh, law blo bloggers, and I will give you one example because I'm sure you would ask me who would do it, like David Allen Green, has pointed out that if you try to come out of the ECHR, that gives you a major problem with the Good Friday Agreement. Right. Now, Richard Tice tried to, yesterday was on LBC, claiming we could just copy and paste the uh, ECHR legislation into the Northern Ireland's laws. No, you can't do that because that's not how it works. Oh, and point. the other thing that that's is, so, so we've got a real problem with that. Yep. Either we'd have to renegotiate the Good Friday Agreement or we come out of it all, or, or, uh, or we come out of the ECHR entirely, which would put the Good Friday Agreement at threat. Now, there is a third yeah. important point. Which but briefly, if you would, because I've yeah. got to get to the news. If yeah. you can do it, I'd be yeah. totally grateful. Okay, briefly, if I would, Thank this you. is a very important point. What would happen if they, if they remove themselves from the ECHR? They would have to replace it with something. So, Dominic Raab uh, proposed replacing it with the Bill of Rights. Some three highlights for the Bill of Rights. Oh, it reduced the... Now, hang on very quickly. Very, it reduces the, uh, the human rights of all our service personnel. So things like the Snatch ran, Land Rover incidents would never right. have seen the light of day. Um, it, re, it reduces the accountability of public authorities. So actually, the second inquest into the Hillsborough disaster would never take place. Well, I was right. just a little bit irritated with your previous caller by oh. sort of mock it, mocking Rishi saying about it being a foreign court and that it could be in um, well in. Garden City or something. Wellingborough. I mean, the yeah, point well, is, yeah, that, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, the, the point is that uh, it is a supernational court, yeah. and it isn't subject to the laws. Which it's the role of the UK Parliament and the government to make laws for courts then to interpret them. And I think that's what feels out of control about the ECHR. It doesn't really seem to have any links to what any government of any hue would, would want in this country. And I, I don't think that's democratic. Um, it doesn't seem fair that um, those kind of courts have uh, passed think, judgments down about policy. Uh, national policies about things like immigration or, for example, voters' rights and so on. But, um, I mean, I wish there was just somebody clever enough who who could work out how you could say no to some of those rules, just like they did about the voters' rights. Um, so so, you, and, and so you, wouldn't want to leave. Anyway, you, you wouldn't want to leave so much. You just want to be able to challenge and, and, and reject some of their rulings. Yeah, I'd, I'd just like to be a bit more transparent about what their jurisdiction is, what areas of policy is that the jurisdiction of the EHCR. Um, and we can't be the only country who are dissatisfied with it. And I'd also be interested in knowing how it has grown and mushroomed over the years as well. 
I mean, obviously, within our own system, Tony Blair inserted the layer of the Supreme Court as well. I'm not quite sure why we need that extra, extra layer. It yes. just seems to drag things on, really. Now, of course, the ECHR was set up in the grim shadow of the Second World War. Let's turn to Gitto Harry, who was Downing Street Director of Communications to Boris Johnson and hosts the Global Player podcast series Unprecedented Inside Downing Street. Gitto joins me now. What was the original aim or ambitions of the ECHR when it's established, Gitto? Morning to you. Well, well, good morning. Yeah, you have to say they were noble and Britain was instrumental because we thought that in the aftermath of the Second World War, and dare I say, Nick, even in your time and mine on planet yep. Earth, there have been generals ruling bits of uh, Europe. There has been genocide in Europe. So we thought that getting everybody signed up to basic human rights was generally a good idea. And a lot of us, including more than half the cabinet and generally the more sensible ones among them, still think that's a good idea. You don't sense in any way it's been hijacked. I refer you not to the UK, to the ruling earlier this week when a group of Swiss women, backed by Greenpeace, went to the ECHR and they will now be paid by the government because of their claim that one of them couldn't go out for three weeks in the hot weather last summer. Is that what the ECHR was set up for? No. and but That's, I what, know that's what the rich. ruling was, Gitto. And I know there are flaws, uh, but again, you know, since when did we decide that when we have an issue with something not being absolutely perfect, that what we do is sort of pick up our ball and go home and sulk? That's Brexit. We've got to be part of a, well, yes, we've got to be part of a consensus of people, because I don't think that the rest of Europe are sort of barking mad on all this. If you get together and you say to the court, this is not what you were set up for, but we still need a court to enforce human rights legislation, you know, when people take legitimate cases to it then fix it rather than walk away yet again do you think they're up for fixing Gitto? well in the end you know governments I mean, you, you, in you've Europe moved in these circles the you, you you know how these people you you know all the prime ministers you've moved in these corridors of power to me as an outsider they ain't for moving well, do you know what? In, people say that about judges in the UK. There are two things you can do in the UK. You either, you know, if the judges sort of impose a law in a way you don't like, you can change the law. Um, you know, or, or in time, you, you, you change the judges over time. I think that the idea that we... I'll tell you there's a bigger problem with this, Nick, in the end. What we're doing is we, we uh, the government has got very stuck on the idea that the only answer to really illegal immigration, and a small part of it actually, small boats, is to actually send people to Rwanda and the court stands in the way. And therefore they want to get rid of the court. That's like having a cramp in your lower leg and chopping your leg off. No, you won't have a cramp, but you've got a far bigger problem.